Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 16, and we've got some oddities of this chapter. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bear him no children. We learn that she's barren. God says you're going to have a child. And she had an handmaid. And we'll look at that in a minute. Because I shot something down. An Egyptian. Well this is back in Gen Genesis chapter 12 where she got this handmaid. When they went down to Egypt, whose name is was Hagar, and um, just leave me a note here. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. It's a true statement, but she's blaming God. Run that back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. And we're going to see again she's going to place the blame game. Since Genesis 3, man has blamed other people. She is saying God has restrained. And it's a very true statement. But what follows next is it's not a, you know, well, God has made me barren. Dear, let's get us together. God says we're going to have children. Let's get in a prayer meeting. Let's fast. Let's do what we can do. Find out what God No, That's not what happened. God has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. Now, what is she thinking? You're my husband. I lied for you, which wasn't really a lie. But I said you were my. I, I'm your sister. God, you know, Abram has told Sarai we're going to have a baby. We're old, but we're going to have a baby. She's blamed God, and she said, well, here is my handmaid, the Egyptian. Two things are wrong here. Number one, Sarai and Abram are married. No. Right there. Number two, Egyptian. That is not to be in the line of the family of Abraham. And we'll talk about that later when we get to Ishmael. Here's my... It may be that I may obtain children by her by proxy. Now, this happens one other time later in Genesis. We're going to see between Jacob and Leah and Rachel, and it causes a mess. But the first, chi the first child born to the handmaid of Rachel, and I forget what her handmaid's name is, is Dan. And Dan is one of them. He's, he's of the children of, of Judah. I mean, he's of, of Israel, excuse me. But Dan, you look at the references, he is so close to the Antichrist. He's not even mentioned the 144,000 of the, of the tribulation uh, saints that go around preaching, but he has, his, he has, I forget, the gate or foundation. This boy is going to be born out of this proxy. He is a child that even today the Middle East fights, and we'll see that prophecy, and he fights the Middle East. Don't go and leave your wife and perform another child. Because according to the Bible, you're going to have a mess. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that you shall also reap. And Abraham's going to have a time. And all the children of Isaac and Jacob and the twelve tribes are going to have a time with what happens right now. It carries all the way to 2017. 
obtained children by her, and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. There's no debate. Okay, I'll take her. What a husband. Not. Nah. Here, dear, lie to protect my life. You want me to have this woman? <laughs> okay. And reading between the lines, you got to wonder. This is so much. I'm not going to put it between the lines. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. God's going to put the, the Egyptian. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Cana, ten years he's in the land, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Now he's got two wives. Because Sarah's upset at God because she can't have the child. Impatience brings a remarkable sin to the children of Israel. And he went in unto Hagar, this is the lust of the flesh, 1 John 2.16. Woohoo, I got this young, I assume young. What would make a guy go into another woman? And she conceived. The problem is with Sarah. Rachel gets all upset. Come on, Jacob, give me a, and Jacob's man is like, it's definitely not Jacob's problem that uh, Rachel can't have a child. <laughs> now we know it is what the Bible says. It's Sarai. She's barren. So Satan allows, comes in and says, okay, go ahead, have that Egyptian child. And I'm going to mess your family up with that child. This is not God. God is not in this. Satan has withheld has gotten permission from God, Job wanted to, to withheld Sarai from bearing children of the line of Jesus Christ, which she will. And Satan goes up Job chapter 2, well, you know, if you put that woman in front of Abram's eyes, I'll tell you right now, he would turn his eyes from his wife and get in bed with her. And God's like, go ahead. And there it is. Now Satan has messed up the Jewish seed. And he went into Sarah and she conceived. When she saw that she had conceived, now there's trouble. Her mistress, trying to find my note here, a woman that governs. Mistress is a woman that governs. So this would be Sarai, was despised in her eyes. We saw that 2 Samuel 13, verses 15. Sarai is not only now is she mad that she can't have a child, she's mad that she has given Abram this, this maid, and this maid has now had a child. What have I done? I have ruined my family. Does she get down on her knees and say, God, I am so sorry. And Sarai said to Abram, my wrong be upon thee. Blame again. I'm wrong. But it's your fault, Abram. You're the one in charge. You're the, it, it's your fault. And you know what? It is. Yes, she's barren. Yes, he allowed this to happen. But she's using it for the blame. She should have gotten down on her knees and repented to God and said, I am so sorry. I have created a mess. I have given my maid into thy bosom. That's your inside. That's that's your 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 tender part. When you hug, that's the most part of the body that touches. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was I was despised in her eyes. I was Sarai was despised in her eyes. Hagar. Hagar's now got a little bit of an attitude. I got a child, you don't. Now you've seen, I can't remember the wife, but you've seen Anna. And then the, the, the other wife, I don't know what her name The other wife is picking on Hannah because I've got all these children and you don't. Hannah brings forth 
Samuel, a man of God, the Lord judge between me and thee, Sarai and Abram. Now that, go ahead, God, judge our marriage, judge what I've done, judge what he's done. And Jeremiah says, correct me with judgment, not with thy wrath, least I come to nothing, something like that. And what Jeremiah is saying, listen, judge me, Lord, show me where I'm wrong, but don't give me wrath. Ishmael is going to be wrath. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. Wow. Sarai is angry. She's envious. She's jealous. She is fighting mad. And Abram said, oh, do whatever you want to do to her. Talking from one wife now to his other wife. Go, go do what you want to do. He doesn't try to settle her down. Doesn't give it time. Just go get her. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, gave her the rat, give her the hard time, give her the, the, the fuss, give her the problems, she fled from her face. Now, I had a note here that says runaway slave. I'm going to show you it's wrong. It says it's a handmaid and an Egyptian. We read the Egyptian part, but we didn't read handmaid. Now, let me, handmaid is 40 times in your Bible. Genesis 16, 1, the first one is Hagar. Genesis 29, 24, there's Zilpha. 29, 19, that's Bilhah. That's Rachel and Leah's handmaids. Exodus, 30, Exodus 23, 12 says they were to rest on the seventh day. Okay, now you ready? I'll show you she's not a runaway maid. Ruth 3, 9, Ruth is called a handmaid. She says, I'm a handmaid to you, Boaz. She wasn't a slave. 1 Samuel 1 11, Hannah. She says, I'm a handmaid of the Lord. She wasn't a slave. 1 Samuel 25, Abigail tells David, I'm your handmaid. She wasn't a slave. 1 Samuel 28, uh, this is, I broke this as a where That's that witch of Endor, the woman of Endor that Saul went to go. And she says, I'm a handmaid of you, King Saul. That's not a, that's not a slave. And to finish up, Luke 138, Mary says, I'm a handmaid of the Lord. She's not a runaway. She's a servant. Handmaid is a servant of the house. And what she what she does, yeah, she's not runaway slave. She just left the job. She quit. She couldn't take it. So when we get to what the angel of the Lord is going to say to her, go back, and then you go run to the Jewish law, which the Jewish law is not happening right now. That's not to Exodus 20. Sorry to burst the guy's bubble, but I did. All right, let's 16.7. Now we're going to get some oddities here. And the angel of the Lord. Now that's the Lord Jesus Christ before he was conceived in the womb of Mary. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now whenever you see the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ in his pre-human form in the Bible. And he even shows up to Joseph. And here's the oddity. It shows up in Genesis 16, 7. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain in the wilderness. The first time the angel of the Lord shows up, he shows up to Hagar. Why? Why didn't he show up to Abram? Why didn't he show up to Seth, Noah? Why are we 16 chapters and 7 verses in, and we got a woman who, is, who has been given to a woman's husband, conceived with child that should not have been, and the angel of the Lord shows up to him. 
And remarkable, John chapter 4, the angel of the Lord shows up to a woman at a well who had not five husbands, and the one that she was with was not her, her husband. Found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. She's heading back to Egypt by where she is. She, she, her, her mind is set, I'm going back to where I came from. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid. Didn't say servant, maid. Not all maids are slaves. And when you run handmaid with Bible with Bible, she was probably paid and probably paid well. So much that Sarah, I say, here, take this woman, Abram, and let her be the, the child bearer of us. She had to have been respected. Sarah just wasn't in her right thing. It's like Abraham in the previous chapter saying, why not Eliezer? Lord, why don't you give the blessing to him since I can't have a son? Abram has Eliezer. And Sarai had Hagar. I don't believe there's any other servants by these two have ever been named. And Eliezer is called a steward. Joseph was a steward in Potiphar's house. He was in charge of it all. Whence camest thou? Now come on, God, you know. Why has been God since Genesis 3 asking these stupid questions? Because he wants you to tell what you've done and he wants you to repent. And whither wilt thou go? Where'd you come from? Where are you going? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. Well, look at that. Here's the first time that God says, what are you doing? And someone answers honestly. What are you doing? What are you doing, Hagar? I'm leaving my, my, my mistress, Hagar. That's, nonsense. That's an honest answer. There's no blame. There's no trying to get out of it. There's no kick in the sand. I'm leaving Sarai. And she doesn't even say why. I said, I'm just leaving her. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hand. Go back to her and do what she tells you to do. Rest in assurance that any persecution, anything happens, I'm, I'm protecting you. Here is an Egyptian woman with no hope, knows nothing, being mistreated, and God, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, is protecting her and says, go back. And later on, he's going to say, tell her to leave. You don't leave this woman out in the wilderness, pregnant. And almost like she's not going to make it. Something's going to happen. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Come on, God. Don't you know what this child is going to do? Don't you know that this child is going to cause wars and, and convert to Muslimism and they're going to give Israel a hard time? Yeah. Yeah. Abraham, you should have never slept with that woman. You should have never done that sin. We all not do our sins. But we do them. And God says, well, i got to chastise you. i got to correct you. you got to suffer the consequences of what you decide to do. And I may lose my neck or whatever. Ishmael is evil to Abram because this was a sin that Abram was not supposed to do. What is evil? Evil is the consequence of your sin. If you become an idiot and for whatever reason you chop off your hand 
And you can't get right with God and say, I repent, I'm sorry, I, I am a born-again Bible-believing Christian, and look at your arm and say, all right, God, now grow that hand back. No, you were an idiot. You can't have a life of sin, and then when the doctor tells you, all right, you got diseases, you got cancer, you got medical ailments, and, but God, I'm saved, I'm done right, I put, yeah, you put it in the blood, God has forgotten. But there's consequences of our sins. The wages of sin is death. The angel said, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and that, and that it shall not be numbered for a multitude, just like Isaac. Just like all the all the descendants of Abraham themselves, you're not going to be able to count them. Because Abraham's going to end up, he's going to have three wives. Sarai, Hagar, and Ketua. Now, watch this one. Watch this layout. 1611. That's another interesting chapter in verse number in your Bible. When the book has 16 chapters and it has a verse 11, according to your 1611 Bible, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. She knew that. And thou shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name almost like Mary. But call his name Ishmael. Ishmael means God shall hear. Abraham's going to pray for this child. Hagar's praying for this child. And God heard. And we're going to run into another thing where, where Abraham's going to pray for the child for, to be that promised seed. And God says, no, Isaac shall be. But I have heard you pray for Ishmael. I've heard you pray for Lot. And I delivered Lot out of Sodom. Almost if Abram did not pray for Ishmael, Ishmael would not have been blessed by God. Abram is a man that when he prays, God listens. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Again, I may lose my neck sometime, but Ishmael is evil. Shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard thy affliction. Hey, God, I see what's going on. I, I saw it all. I've heard the tears. And that's exactly what God says to Moses when he goes back to Israel and Egypt. I have seen the task massacres. I have seen the rigor. I have heard your crying. I will bring you out. That's what almost like he's saying to Hagar, the Egyptian. Hagar is probably a colored woman being an Egyptian. Do you know who the first Gentile person in the Bible to be saved by grace through the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he suffered and died and bled for us? Ethiopian eunuch. Don't go ranking on the colored people. I assume they got their color by now. I don't know when they got their color. But here is an Egyptian. And Jesus Christ, before his flesh, shows up at this woman's... Uh, I said Show up at this woman, w with this woman, at a well. And you're not even four chapters in the Gospel of John and Jesus shows up to a woman at a well. Isn't that remarkable? And he will be a wild man. <laughs> and he is. This is your Arabians. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against it. He's going to find no peace with no one nowhere at all. He's a man of war. No peace. And watch this. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren 
Jews. So go over in the land of Palestine, the land of Israel today, and I don't think it would be hard not to find Arabian. And that stands in 1612 of Genesis. And remember that far vast land that God said to Abraham, I'm going to give it to you all of the river Euphrates. Babylon. That area right now, the Arabians are running around. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? What she's saying is, I wasn't looking for God. You came looking for me. Now, does that sound familiar? There is none that seeketh. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. There is none righteous. There is none that seeketh after God. And yet the Holy Spirit has to come into our hearts for us to be saved. There she is. Wherefore, the well was called Bir La Hararai. The well, the beer, B-E-E-R, is a well. Beer means water. And do you know what how much what beer as the alcohol beverage is made mostly of? Water. They took it out of the Bible. It's the well of him that liveth and seeth me. Now go on your own and read John chapter four and match scripture with scripture. The entire town or city came and got saved. And Jesus bowled there for a few days. And more got saved. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. That's down south. And Hagar bare Abram a son. Now, I got a question. I always, always read the Bible and I always ask questions. Did Hagar ever tell Abram what happened? Because here she is at the well, verse 14. And we don't know how long she was in pregnancy. But boom, verse 15, now she has the boy. How does Sarai teach her? Was there ever this, con this conversation that God met with her? You, see, you know how many months between 14 and 15 is? Well, I'm, I'm saying this because we read your Bible. You think, oh, boom, okay, she goes back and she has the baby. No, there are months between 14 and 15. Just because you got a, a verse, and it goes to the next verse. Some verses can span out years. There are places in your Bible that a comma separates the first and the second advent. Or a colon. Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. Now, did she tell him, or did, did God speak to Abram? But there's that name, that pre-name. The first child to be pre-named in your Bible. Where God spoke and said, you're going to name this child this name, you find to be Ishmael. Isaac is another one. Jesus is another one. John the Baptist is another one. Jeremiah. All these men, all of a sudden, Ishmael runs as a type of Christ. By his birth. Thou shalt bear a son, thou shalt call his name. That's what was said to Mary by Gabriel. And Abram was fourscore and six years old old he is 86 years old and Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram and then we close the chapter